I woke up this morning and I put on my pants. Please, hold the applause, thank you. No, I woke up this morning and I put on my pants and I realized I have a dominant leg. Every morning, I put my pants on with my left leg first. Since I was presenting here today, I was like, let's switch it up. So I put my right leg in first. Needless to say, it did not go well. Um, I fell, I hurt myself, very embarrassing. But I realized the reason I fell was because I was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable because I switched up my routine. I changed my habit. Have you ever experienced that? When you switch something up, big or small, and you just couldn't handle it? Well, I want you to experience that right now. I want everyone to go ahead right now and cusp your hands together just like this. Great. Which thumb is on top? Left, right? A little bit of both? Cool. I want you to go ahead, open those hands up, and consciously put it together with the other thumb on top now. Ooh, weird. Gross. Let's try it another way. I want you to get nice and comfortable. Cross your arms like this is the worst TEDx you've ever heard. Great. Which arm's on top? Left, right, a little bit of both. I want you to go ahead, open those arms up, and consciously put the other arm on top now. Oh, weird, uncomfortable. You all look like this very, very angry baby right now. This is what a habit looks like and feels like. I mean, think about it. Think about all those times you were driving home late at night and you thought, did I stop at that stop sign? Did I go through that red light? Of course you did. You always do. It's innate. It's a part of you. That's a habit. But that's the good type of habit. That's the habit that makes our lives easier. But there are also bad types of habits. Habits that make our lives more difficult. That makes problem solving more difficult. That makes creativity more difficult. See, the problem here is Breaking a habit is really, really hard, but developing a new one is really easy. I have one more thing I want to try with you right now. It's a math problem. I know it's a Saturday and I'm making you do math. I'm a terrible person. Deal with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a number up on that screen. When that number pops up, you're going to say it out loud. And then with each new number, you're going to add them together. Simple, right? Okay. So this first number up here is... Oh my God, wake up, people! That number again is? And you add 40 to that and you get? 2040, 2040, 2040, 2040, 2040, I heard a few 5,000s and one 6,000, sir, no, okay? <laughs> Let's go back to the last known piece of information we agreed on, 4,090, right? Good, great, you add 10 to that and you get 4,100, not 5,000. I think there are some college students here too. What did I do to you? What happened? I created a new habit for you. In about 35 seconds, you had a new habit and you fell for it. I mean, a lot of us really didn't stand a chance. I'm sorry. I created a new habit. You fell for it. That was it. TEDx. If we want to fix the world, we have to break bad on these habits and start thinking more creatively. Now, I can't take credit for these activities. No, they actually come courtesy of my friends over at Buffalo State College and Dr. Roger Firestein in the International Center for Studies in Creativity. What we do there is we study creativity and the everyday use of it. We are ideators and we are creators. And what we do is we see the world through a more creative lens. And you will too. By the end of today's talk, you will not only feel more creative, but you'll also walk away with some tips and tricks on how to break those bad habits. And we'll do that by following four very easy, very simple rules. So rule one, defer judgment. Rule two, strive for quantity. Rule three, seek wild and unusual ideas and rule four, combine, improve, and build on other ideas. What does it all mean? Well, according to Alex Osborne, the godfather of brainstorming, if we follow these four almost shifts in mindsets, we can afford ourselves a more creative outcome. So let's look at them. Rule one says defer judgment. Let's role play real quick. This is how about 95% of all humans act when they're developing a new idea internally at least. Okay, I have a problem. I think I have a solution to that. 
no, that's stupid. That won't work. Boom. Dead. You just destroyed your own idea for no reason. You judged yourself far too quickly. You didn't even give your chance, your idea a chance to live or breathe. Judging ourselves is a major, major problem in creativity. But you know what else is a problem? Judging someone else's idea too quickly. For this next scenario, I actually have some imagery on the screen that I think will further prove my point. So, Becky, oh my God, I have an amazing new idea. I think it's gonna be absolutely smashing. And I think it has to do with creativity. What do you think? Oh, Tim, that's terrible. That'll never work. Shattered, destroyed. Your idea was just destroyed by someone else. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever started to explain an idea and it just gets shut down right away? If we can break the habit of being too self-critical or too critical of others, we may be able to actually produce a new idea. But we can't stop with just one idea. No, we need to keep pushing. We need to strive for quantity. Because rule two says do it. Have you ever been thinking of solutions to problems and then you land on one you like and you're like, that's it, I'm done, thank God, and you start implementing that idea right away and it's terrible? Sometimes it works, sometimes it's good, but no, we need to strive for quantity. We need to keep pushing ourselves. So the habit is we're tending to do the one and done mindset and we're done and we move on. We need to set an idea quota. And what that essentially means is, if you're gonna come up with about a solution, you should probably come up with about 10 viable options, right? Science says that the first third of ideas shared, those are the usual ones. They tend to be a bit boring. They're the ones that are fresh on someone's mind. That's why they're said first. It's the second third of ideas shared where we dig a little bit deeper and we get into the ideas that are unusual and interesting. Those are good, good place to start, but they're not great. It's the final third of ideas where we dig really deep and we get into the wild, crazy, unusual ideas. We call that the loopy stage. You see, the problem is we always tend to stop when we get to the loopy stage. So you need to keep pushing and get there because rule three says seek wild and unusual ideas. Wild and unusual ideas. We tend to stop once we get into the loopy stage, and that's really because our bosses, our managers, our teachers, they tend to tell us that it's a waste of time or almost as if it's slacking off. When in actuality, that's when some of our best new ideas come to light, right? I mean, think about it. Throughout most of our lives, we've always been told, be creative, think outside the box, be wild and crazy. But that always came with the caveat of not being too wild or too crazy or too outside the box. Forget that. Go big with your ideas. Make them huge. Because it's always easier to downgrade your idea than it is to upgrade it. Don't believe me? Think of it this way. It's probably a lot easier to tame a lion than it is to make a house cat wild. I'll say it again. It's probably a lot easier to tame a lion than it is to make your house cat, Fluffy, sitting on the couch waiting for you to come home, wild. I just killed your cat, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we need to go big with these ideas. Make them big, bold, and beautiful. And then later, fine tune them, perfect them. You never wanna start perfecting your idea until you've gone huge first. And finally, we have rule four, but rule four isn't so much a rule as it is debunking a myth. You see, one of the big myths within creativity is the idea of novelty and originality. We always think we have to come up with something brand spanking new. In actuality, you don't. Let me explain, let me explain. You know that device in your pocket right now, the one you would much rather be scrolling through Instagram on? Yes, the smartphone. Ooh, ah, yes. When that first came out, it was novel, new, sexy. It sold millions. But if you break that down, it's really nothing special, right? I mean, this iPhone right here, it's really just your camera. It's your mailbox or your emails. It's also your wallet and television. It's your iPod, and of course, it's your phone. Apple just put them all together. So rule four is really combined, build, and improve on other ideas. Now, I'm not saying steal someone else's idea. No, that will get me sued, and I ain't got that kind of money. 
I'm suggesting use those ideas as inspiration, right? The Japanese actually have a term for this. It's called shindogu, which essentially means silly, genius, or unuseless inventions. What they do is they take creative solutions to everyday problems, and then they add a fun, silly twist. You see, it was thought of, if you have a baby who's crawling on the floor, and you need to get your floor cleaned, why not put it together? <laughs> so someone did that. And now you have a mop that eats, sleeps, drinks, poops, and cleans up after itself. It's the new sham wow, it's amazing, <laughs> right? So don't be afraid to build, improve, and collaborate. Just don't steal. So we want to fix the world. We want to change it and better it, and that's absolutely amazing. But don't wait to start fixing the world. When you leave here today, I want you to start noticing what is it that's preventing you from being creative. And then fix it. Start small if you need to. If you're driving home from work and you notice a small traffic jam, try a new route. Now you may get home faster or slower, and that's okay. But by taking this small risk, you'll start to notice a shift in your mindset. You'll be open to new and exciting opportunities. That's it. Start small. Yeah, you will probably be very uncomfortable by this. Very. Very <laughs> and angry <laughs> and a baby. Um, but you will also probably be uncomfortable by not getting the math problem right. And you may even fall down when you're putting your pants on, just like me. But that's okay, because creativity isn't always about the results we get. It's also about the trials and tribulations we face along the way. So today, I challenge you. I challenge you to be more creative. Start thinking in new and exciting ways. Because if we want to fix the world, we've got to break bad on these habits and start thinking more creatively. Thank you, and happy creativity. <laughs>